Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can increase your intelligence, that is, increase your IQ score basically overnight. Now, I have a very different take on this than most people, so what you're about to see here, you've probably never heard before. Now, most people will tell you either that intelligence is something that you're born with and that you're never going to get rid of, that it's something that's purely genetic and it comes from your parents and you have no control over it, or they think that um, intelligence is something like a, like a muscle. It's something like strength that you can build and develop over time with exercise. But my belief, based on my own experience and observation, is that intelligence really is clarity. It's not strength, it's not horsepower, it's just clarity. If you have clear channels to the sources of information outside of you, that is where intelligence comes from. And so if you want to increase your intelligence, all you have to do is remove the blocks in those pipelines of information. So I made a little drawing here to uh, give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. So let's say that up here is the source of all information. Now, you can call this the source of all information. You can call it God. You can call it the energy of the universe. Um, some people call it the Akashic Records, whatever you want to call it, there is a, a source of all truth in the universe. Now, here is your spirit. So, somewhere, the source of information, the source of all information in the universe, is coming to your spirit, your soul, the essence of you that exists outside of your body. And then, from your spirit, that information goes to your brain, which is down here, right? Your physical brain made of atoms and molecules and cells, right? So there is a pathway from your spirit to your brain. And so you have two pathways that the clarity of which determines your intelligence. You have the clarity of this pathway from the source of all information to your spirit, and then you have the clarity of this pathway from your spirit to your brain. And if you have blocks along either or both of those pathways, you are going to have suboptimal intelligence. And in fact, being in these physical bodies, we all have suboptimal intelligence to some degree, but for some people it's different than others. Now, this is obviously a lot different than what the um, materialistic education system would have you believe, right? They believe that everything is in the brain, everything starts in the brain and ends in the brain, and there is no spirit and there is no source. I think that that view is, is rather myopic and it's wrong for a variety of reasons. One of those reasons is that pattern recognition just seems to kind of come uh, when it wants to come, right? It, you, you look at some information, you recognize a pattern, it just comes into your brain, right? You're not really having to force it. It's not like, to, to use the muscle analogy, it's not like you're bench pressing. It's not like you're expending effort. It's something that just kind of comes to you. It's information coming to you from some source external to you, some source outside of you. It's the same as inspiration. Um, it's the same as, is, uh, if you know, if you think about who are the most intelligent people? What do you call those people? Well, normally you call them a genius. Look at the word genius. Genius comes from the same root as the word genesis, right? The beginning of things. It's the same as the, the root of the word generate, right? A genius is somebody who generates ideas, somebody who the ideas come from. However, if you actually listen to those geniuses, they will generally tell you that the ideas just came to them. Right? They woke up one morning and uh, Eureka, they had some idea that was planted in their brain. And oftentimes, the, the more humble of the geniuses will admit that they really had no part in, in the idea, that it was just given to them in some way, that it came from outside of them. So my belief is that the genius is just somebody who has these pathways open so that they can receive those ideas and that information from outside of them so that they can receive the information about what the pattern in front of them means or what the data in front of them means in terms of a pattern. Second reason I believe that it works like this is that spirits who do not have a body are able to think. 
spirits have intelligence, right? And there's a ton of literature on this. Um, if you really want to de dive deep into how the spirit world works, read the book, The Spirits Book by Alan Kardec. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to get into the weeds on that. I'm not going to go super deep into it, but just, I mean, if you come at this from pretty much any religion, uh, when you die, your, your you shed your body, and do you, after you die, are you still able to think? Well, if so, that means that you do not need a brain in order to have intelligence. You do not need a brain in order to think. So clearly, based on observational evidence and pretty much every religion in the world, the brain does not create thoughts, right? The brain is just a receiver. The brain receives the thoughts from the spirit. It filters them. It interprets them in some ways. It's very similar to how the brain receives information from the eyes. The brain did not generate that information. It came from the source of information to the eyes, and then the brain received it from the eyes and interpreted it in the way that it saw fit. So it's pretty clear if you look at the evidence that the brain is not the source of thinking. The brain is not the source of intelligence. And then the third reason that I believe that this is true is because the blocks, remember I told you about the blocks in these pipelines that uh, reduce intelligence? Well, these blocks can be physical or they can be spiritual, right? There can be physical blocks uh, down here between the spirit and the brain, and there can be spiritual blocks between source and the spirit. And so obviously, if you would like to increase your intelligence, what you need to do is to remove these blocks. So let's go over what some of these blocks actually are. So there, there are these blocks that are um, clogging, let's say, the flow of information from the spirit to the brain. You can think about this similar as plaque in the bloodstream, right? When somebody gets a heart attack, it's because there's something that's blocking the blood from getting uh, through the veins and arteries. So you have blocks in this pipeline from the spirit to the brain. A really obvious one is Down syndrome, right? Down syndrome is a problem with the development of the brain that blocks this connection. Another one of these blocks is alcohol. If you go and drink a whole bunch of alcohol and get really drunk, well, you're probably not gonna be very smart um, for some temporary amount of time. Another one is Alzheimer's disease, right? Alzheimer's disease caused by heavy metal poisoning in the brain. It blocks your brain's ability to uh, think clearly. Another one is lack of sleep, right? If you have a lack of sleep, your IQ is going to go down until you make up for that lack of sleep. Another one is poor circulation, right? If you're not getting enough blood into your brain, that's going to block it. It's going to make it less efficient as an antenna for the intelligence that is coming from your spirit. So those are some examples of the physical blocks that get in the way of the flow of information, the flow of intelligence from your spirit to your brain. Now, you can also have spiritual blocks that get in the way of the flow from source to the spirit. So a big one of those uh, spiritual blocks is your beliefs about yourself or your beliefs about how the world works, right? So if you were told when you were a child, you were told repeatedly that you weren't smart and that you weren't ever going to be good at anything and you weren't ever going to uh, amount to anything and, and you were a big dumb idiot, right? You Chances are you picked that up. You, you might have uh, come to believe that it was true. And if that's the case, the fact that you believe that you're not smart actually reduces your IQ, your expectation uh, your belief in the nature of reality has a, a massive impact on the actual nature of reality, especially when it comes to our own bodies and our own spirits. So if you believe that you're not smart, you're not going to try that hard. Um, you're not going to put in that much effort, and you're going to reinforce this idea that you're not smart. Another problem, another block might be if you were told that you are smart, like you're always told that you're the smartest kid in class, for example. Well. That's something that, you know, you might think is a positive thing uh, on the front, but it, it may actually work against you because it may be that you get so, like, you're, you're so identified with that label of being the smartest kid in class that you're very afraid of anything that might challenge that, right? So if you try to do something that's challenging, uh, you'll, well, you'll shy away from that because you're afraid that you won't be good at it. And then if you were not good at it, then you lose your identity as the smartest kid in class. 
right? And that, that comes through into adulthood. Uh, adults who are, told, or who are told all the time as kids that they were smart, well, they grow up and they're, they're um, unable to face challenges oftentimes because they're afraid of ruining that identity that they've come to like. And of course, this is really bad for people who believe that IQ is fixed, right? That IQ is genetic, that you're born that way, which is something that culture pushes, pushes on us like crazy, right? We're the, the born this way culture, that everything about you is set by genetics or, or just set from your birth and there's nothing you can do about it, uh, which is a really awful belief, but that's, that's what our culture is. It says, Whatever you are now, you were born that way. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, it's very, very false, frankly, and disempowering belief. And so if you buy into that, you're going to have a really hard time, uh, especially if you have this identity of you're smart and at the same time you believe that IQ is fixed. Well, if something, if you try something challenging and you fail and you find out that you're actually not smart, not only are you going to lose that identity, but you're gonna lose it permanently because you believe that that's something that's fixed, right? So beliefs like that can cause a ton of anxiety, which is actually going to make you less smart. Another really good example of, of how beliefs uh, affect this pathway here is the concept of stereotype threat, which if you never heard of stereotype threat, it's, uh, it's, they've done some studies showing that people perform differently on intellectual tasks when they are reminded of their uh, identity in a certain group. So for example, they, they, one of the studies that I read, they had uh, two groups of black students that they gave IQ tests or um, something similar to an IQ test. And they were the same tests, except that on one of them, they started by asking the person their race, and then the other one, they asked the person their race at the end after they had already finished the test. And what they found was that the people who were asked their race at the beginning did significantly worse on the test than people who were asked their race at the end. So basically what's going on is that in these people's minds, they associate being black with having a low IQ. And so if you remind them or, or make them remind themselves that they're black before they take the test, then they believe, they, they have that idea in their head that they're going to perform poorly. And so it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and they actually do perform poorly. Whereas if you don't remind them beforehand, then they perform significantly better. And you see society is constantly pushing this, this stereotype, by the way, and they know what they're doing, right? This is, this is completely psychological manipulation, right? They have this, this narrative of the uh, white oppressor and the black victim, right? And so this is psychological warfare against both sides, right? They cause white people to feel guilty and ashamed of themselves to feel like that because they're white, they're evil and therefore ought to be punished. Um, that, that causes people to hold themselves back, right? If you have guilt that you're, you're carrying around, and obviously this is the same for anybody of any race, if you're carrying around guilt, you are going to sabotage yourself, whether consciously or unconsciously, because you do not believe that you deserve success, right? So that's going to cause you to self-sabotage. And then on the other hand, uh, with the poor oppressed black victim, they're saying that, they're, they're implying that you are completely helpless. Why are you oppressed? Well, because there's nothing that you can do for yourself. And so you need us, the um, big, powerful government people, to, to give you special benefits so that you won't be oppressed anymore because you are completely weak and helpless and unintelligent by yourself, right? And so, and they'll, they'll never say that outright, but that's always the implication. And so they're sabotaging both sides, right? They're sabotaging one side with, with guilt and self-punishment, and they're sabotaging the other side with a sense of helplessness and that, there's the, that they're inferior and there's nothing they can do unless they get special help, right? So this is done intentionally to hold both sides down, but I, I won't go too deep down that rabbit hole, but the point is that what you believe about yourself affects your intelligence greatly. So your belief about yourself could be a huge blockage uh, in this spiritual pipeline. Another big blockage in the spiritual pipeline is your emotional state. 
Have you ever done something really stupid when you were feeling afraid or you're feeling anxious or you're feeling angry, right? Probably all of us have. Because when we're in those emotional states, and again, emotional is spiritual. There is no molecule of emotion. Spirits are perfectly capable of feeling emotion without having a brain, without having neurotransmitters and nervous system and such. So your emotional state can be a huge blockage. If you're feeling negative emotion, that is going to drive your IQ down considerably. Now, if you have patterns of negative emotion, then it will drive it down on a consistent basis. So think about this. What if intellectual situations themselves make you anxious or make you angry? Well, what's going to happen? Anytime you have any, any situation that is going to be a proof of your intelligence, you're going to get angry or you're going to get afraid, and that is going to drop your intelligence. And so you're going to be creating this vicious cycle, right? Maybe your parents told you that you were never going to amount to anything and that you were an idiot. And so whenever, um, you know, whenever you took tests in school, you failed because it just reminded you of what your parents said about you and you came to believe that you were stupid. And so now if an intellectual situation comes up, it makes you angry. What happens when you're angry? Well, you get stupid, right? Not because you are stupid, because of your anger is making you stupid. And so you fail the test, you perform poorly. And so what does that do? Well, it provides, it creates feedback. Well, you have this feedback that you performed poorly. You performed like a person who is not intelligent. So the thing makes you angry, you perform poorly. The poor performance reinforces the idea that you are not intelligent. And then the next time you're, you're presented with a situation like that, you get even more angry, you're even more anxious. So you create this vicious cycle that is, is making you less intelligent, not because you were born that way, not because it's your genetics, but because of your emotional reaction and your habitual response to that situation. So now with all of that background, let me get into the actual things that you can do in order to increase your intelligence. So I, I've grouped these into two categories. One, things that will get you instant results. Like I'm saying, uh, you can increase your IQ overnight. These are the things that are going to do that. Number one, get a good night's sleep, right? Plenty of research has shown that your brain, that your mind performs better when you have a good night's sleep. That's something that you can do overnight. Uh, you, can, you can eat some healthy food, right? Instead of eating that donut that you were going to eat, uh, eat an apple, eat some strawberries, right? That, that will um, create more energy in your body within the space of a few hours that is going to improve your circulation. It's going to improve your brain's ability to function properly as an antenna for this information that's coming from your spirit. Another thing that you can do instantly is to change your beliefs, right? Change your beliefs that you've held for so long about your intelligence or about what intelligence means or whether intelligence is fixed or it's something that's fluid. It's something that you can change over time, right? Now, changing beliefs is not necessarily easy, but if you have the right uh, techniques, then that's something that you can do instantly. And I'm not going to dive into how to do that because that's a whole can of worms. But the point is that you can change your beliefs essentially overnight. And then the last thing for instant change is that you can change your emotional states or change your emotional reactions, right? If you, if you can change from being anxious or being angry to being happy and optimistic and expecting a good outcome, that's going to make you more intelligent. If you can reinterpret a situation that in a way that makes you happy instead of a way that makes you unhappy, right? And that's, that's something that you can always do. Like every situation known to man has positive and negative elements of it. And so you can choose to focus on the, the, the positive instead of the negative, and that will raise your mood, which will raise your intelligence. So that's how you raise your intelligence instantly. Now, you can also raise your intelligence more over the long term if you will adapt, adopt some better habits. So a few ways you can do that. Number one is to cleanse heavy metals 
and viruses and bacteria that are creating neurotoxins that are harming your brain, right? And again, this is a whole can of worms that I could get into, but I'm not going to for the sake of brevity here. But if you're interested in that, check out uh, a guy on YouTube called The Medical Medium. Uh, his, his real name's Anthony Williams. Um, or, or uh, you know, he might get banned on YouTube. I wouldn't be surprised. But he's really mind-blowing stuff. If you want to learn how to cleanse your body so that your brain functions better and, you know, you stop being sick of a whole bunch of different diseases, then check that out. Another thing you can do is get in shape, right? Start exercising on a regular basis. Exercise increases your blood flow, including the blood flow to your brain, which makes your brain a better antenna for the information that's coming from your spirit. Start incorporating healthy habits, right? Start eating healthy on a regular basis, right? Eating healthy just right now will make a little bit of a difference, but if you make a habit of eating, of eating healthy in general as your general lifestyle, then your circulation will work better, your body will work better in general, you'll have more energy, and that will increase your brain power. And I should say brain clarity, right? The, this is how ingrained this is in our society to think that the there is such thing as a brain power, right? That's just what we say. It's not really power, it's brain clarity, right? It's, it's clarity of the pipeline. And then of course, there are other healthy habits you could adopt too, right? Like sleeping at the same time every night, waking up at the same time every day and getting your full eight hours of sleep, right? It's great to get eight hours of sleep today, but if, unless you have your sleep cycle dialed in in general, you're not gonna get the maximum benefit there. So. Uh, improve your sleep cycle, um, improve your movement, right? Go outside and get some sunlight. I have other videos I can link that, that are all about how to improve your health. And when you improve the health of your body, you're improving the health of your brain, which is the antenna that collects the uh, information that comes to you. And then finally, and this one is, is super important, super beneficial, is to have a daily meditation practice. Whenever you wake up in the morning, you go brush your teeth, you go Put in your contact lenses if you're blind like I am, and then go and meditate, right? Find some guided meditation track and, and meditate uh, for, for 10 or 20 minutes. Or, you know, if you're, just, if you're just getting into it, meditate for five minutes or two minutes, right? Whatever you can handle. It, this will make enormous differences in th this actually meditation has been proven to help with this physical pathway. And then it also helps with the spiritual pathway. This is, is what helps with those emotional reactions. So when you're faced with a situation that might trigger you, you can take a step back. You can, you can calm down a little bit and not react in such an emotional way, not react with anger or with fear. And so thereby you, don't, you, you remove that block to your intelligence. Now, if you'd like some help implementing this, then I am kicking around the idea. This is not something set in stone by any means as of uh, recording this in, in March of 2022, but I'm kicking around the idea of actually doing a intensive one-day workshop where I bring you through everything that, that I can do to make you more intelligent, right? And this is gonna focus especially on the beliefs, changing your beliefs that are holding you back and the emotional states, right? Helping you to have healthier, more positive emotional states that raise your intelligence. I'll also get into some of the other things that you can do, but the idea is that I'm going to increase your IQ overnight. That is the purpose of this. Again, this is something I've never done before. It's just an idea. If you are interested, then send me an email at chris at dominatethemarketplace.net. Just just send me a short email and tell me that you're interested, right? And then I'll reach out to you with details if and when I decide to actually do this. This is something I've never heard of anybody else doing before, so I'm, I'm kind of excited about the prospect. Um, but, you know, it, it depends on how much interest I get, right? Like if a lot of people are interested, if it's something that the people really want, then, then I'll do it. Um, but that remains to be seen. So send me an email if you're interested. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe, hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my new videos first. Share this video with anybody who's a big dummy. 
just kidding. <laughs> with anybody who you think that might be able to benefit from it, which actually is everybody, right? No matter how intelligent you are, you could always be more intelligent and it would benefit you. Uh, and uh, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. If you think I'm a, a big wacko and I'm full of crap, then, then feel free to let me know. Or if this was really enlightening for you, I'd love to hear that too. So thanks for watching. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy this video all about how to optimize your health, optimize your energy, and it will have knock-on effects for your brain clarity.